Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode on Badminton Unlimited. This week, we shine the spotlight on India's badminton darling, Prasala V. Sindhu, as she opens up about how her Olympic success has changed her expectations for Tokyo 2021. Back then and now, uh, definitely everything has changed. And now it's like, when I go for the Olympics, it's like, yes, I want to get that medal. And we break down Prasala's recent performances, plus thoughts from our experts. But I've always said that PV Sindhu is a big tournament player. We begin the show on a somber note. Nigerian para badminton player Bello Rafiu Oyabanji, triple gold medalist at the African Para Badminton Championships 2018, lost his life in a motor accident on the 21st of April 2021. Bello competed in the standing lower SL4 category and was a member of the BWF Para Badminton Athletes Commission since 2017. Taking up badminton 17 years ago with able bodied players, Bello turned his attention to coaching in addition to playing. He was considered one of the best para badminton players from Africa. We here at Badminton Unlimited send our condolences to Bello's family and loved ones. We've never had this before because it was always, we've been traveling, we were busy with our schedule, we were busy with our tournaments. But all of a sudden it was like everything has come to a standstill and everybody had to stay at home. There were no tournaments almost for a year. So everybody didn't know what to do because it was so uh, different, I would say. Something, you know, not playing tournaments, just sitting at home, doing nothing. We had like a lot of free time and a lot of time to spend with our parents. So I think it was something different apart from, you know, which is always where we used to play sport. So we had to get used to it, yes. But at the same time, it was nice that, you know, we were spending time with our family members got to do new things, got to know new things, learning new stuff. So yeah, it was something different and nice, I would say, in a way. The year 2020 will be remembered in history for the wrong reasons, as the world suffered a pandemic. Badminton, like all other sports, was affected badly as many countries went into lockdown. India's Prasala V. Sindhu shares her experience of the past year and how she tried to tackle it by having a positive outlook. I mean, actually, uh, when we, uh, we didn't have any tournaments, I was like, I was pretty much uh, keeping myself positive because I know it's a bit annoying where we used to think, oh, what is this? We don't have tournaments. But I always kept myself positive and uh, I kept myself busy, I would say, in some or the other way. So, yeah, I still don't know how those couple of months just went off. <laughs> and uh, now it's like, um, yes, it's, it's good that, you know, uh, staying positive, being positive. And, oh, uh, well, I've learned a bit of cooking, baking, and I really love painting. So I, I do that. And I have a nephew. He's two years old, two and a half years old. So I spend a lot of time with him. So it was nice. I mean, and spent with family members, just staying at home. We also got a new dog recently, so, and also I love spending time at home and my sister just stays, you know, five meters, ten meters away, so, yeah, we all used to just get together and, yeah, so we are all in the same community. <laughs> it was sad because, you know, we did not, um, have any matches, so, and also the Olympics got postponed because we were, uh, it was just like a couple of months and we were all set and we were uh, getting prepared for the Olympics but unfortunately, you know, it got postponed. It was it was sad but I think it is very important where the life comes first and uh, yeah, because of this COVID, everybody has been getting affected so, uh, you know, it was like, okay, you know, it is better to stay at home and be safe because life comes first. So it was sad but I think uh, we've all managed it because, yeah, I was uh, training from home where, of course, I've missed on court Definitely yes, but yeah, of course I used to just do some uh, activities where my trainer used to give me a schedule and just from home. So yeah, it was a bit uh, different, but um, yeah, we got used to it. And now uh, it's like when we were back on court, we were all very excited and I was very excited where, okay, you know, now we are finally back. But at the same time, yes, even the tournament uh, organizers have been taking care and you know, uh, having the safety rules. I think it is very important 
for every uh, athlete and for everyone to be safe and uh, maintain that social distancing and yeah just play so finally we are back on court and happy about it and excited so again after a year i'm here so yeah looking forward <laughs> Part of Prasala's preparations for returning to the court was a stint in the United Kingdom in the final quarter of 2020. The world champion spent three months in England from October training with the national team as well as attending the Gatorade Sports Science Institute to focus on recovery and nutrition. Well, actually, I've gone to England for the GSSI, the Gatorade thing, and uh... Uh, I am with them since a very long time, so every time I come to England, uh, you know, the body analysis, the sweat analysis was very important. It is a, a very important for every athlete, the body analysis, because every athlete should know what it is, you know, what's going on in your body and how is it actually going. Uh, when it comes to your fitness levels, physically, mentally, it's very important. And of course, diet also is very important. So. Uh, every time I come to England, they always ask me to stay for a longer time, which was not possible. But I think that was the right time where I went for, you know, three months and, you know, spent my time. And it was a long gap where I didn't have anything. And I was like, okay, finally I come. <laughs> and it was very good for me. And it was something different where, um, you know, the coaching was different. And I, I played with the uh, England uh, national team players. So at the same time, I got my uh, body analysis done. So it was like different atmosphere and I think that is very much needed for every every athlete and I really enjoyed myself in England of course it's a cold weather <laughs> so it was nice. <laughs> I mean working on my uh, body analysis definitely yes it's not a, a small process of course it's gonna take time it's a long process where uh, uh, it is very important where you keep your body in shape. At the same time uh, I used to play with Rajiv he was an ex uh, player who used to really do well so I think I've, uh, he's been telling me some tips and I've been playing with different players. So it's always good to play with different players and it's always nice to hear uh, your mistakes from different uh, athletes because you know every athlete has a different mindset and you know they see your game in a different way. So I think it, it has helped me and I've learned a lot more. And she's done it. It's a yes. huge win. And she shows her emotions at the end. And Mia Blickfeld with an upset here, defeating the six seed, Pusala Sindhu. And a stunning result. And that is PV Sindhu out of the Yonex Thailand Open. I would not blame that I didn't play well in uh, Thailand, but it happens, I think, you know. It's it's it happens sometimes but uh, I've just learned from my mistakes and uh, yeah I've come back stronger <laughs> coming back on court and you know uh, playing that strategy giving you know giving our best is very important and I mean at times it happens where after a long time you come back and you lose in the first round it's frustrating but I think you you will learn a lot more you know from your losses and you know come back stronger and yeah be uh, make yourself stronger and you know you will come back in the next tournament much more stronger. I think that's what happened back then in Thailand. And, you know, I've learned a lot more and I came back stronger in Swiss. At the 2016 Rio Olympics, Persala v Sindhu was one of the biggest stories to emerge from the Games. In her debut tournament, the then 21-year-old Sindhu fended off challenges posed by Tai Tzu Ying and Nozomi Okuhara to only fall short at the final hurdle. She lost to top seed and world number one Carolina Marin in the final, but earned India a first Olympic badminton silver and became the youngest Indian to ever win an Olympic medal. Since then, Sindhu has grown as a player and as a person, ready to tackle the new challenges facing her at Tokyo 2021. Yeah, as a player, I think there have been a lot of changes where I've improved my game, I've, I've been very confident now and I've been mature enough to uh, face it, um, face the opponent where, you know, sometimes you might tend to make mistakes. So how to come out from those mistakes is very, very important and uh, it happens sometimes and if you lose also, it is fine. I mean, there are days where you just can't give your best and you just can't do anything about it. So I've learned, you know, fr from my mistakes and I've come back and practiced how to do that and how to come, come out from it. 
So as a player, I think I've definitely, uh, game-wise, I've improved a lot. And uh, uh, personally, uh, as a normal uh, person, uh, I think um, I've been very much matured enough and I've been very straightforward. And uh, when people speak about me anything, I'm like, okay, you know, this is it. So I've been very straightforward and I've been very positive, I would say, in a lot of uh, terms because sometimes uh, people tell a lot of negativity uh, might be going on. But I think it's very important to stay positive and just take what is important, just let go what is not needed. I think as a person, I've uh, really been very confident and very mature enough, I would say, yeah. Yeah, I think it is very important, you know, you should know when it is and there are always limits. When they cross that limit, I think you just have to have that blinds on and you're like, fine, I'm just it. Like, you have to just focus on what you're doing and that's all. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, definitely Olympics. Before I played Olympics, uh, I, it was one of... You know, for everyone, Olympics is there and it's an ultimate aim, ultimate goal. And before playing Olympics, yes, that was it. That was my aim and goal. So when I played Olympics in 2016, I had no goal, but I just went into the mindset where I have to just give my best and play my game. But yes, I've uh, got silver. And uh, back then and now, uh, definitely everything has changed. And now it's like, when I go for the Olympics, it's like, yes, I want to get that medal. So year by year, step by step, it's been changing and um, this time I think 2021 um, I would just want to see myself there and I want to get a medal for the country and just give my best, yeah. The Olympic silver proved to be the perfect stepping stone for Prasanna. Onwards she went, clinching more medals, including the big ones at the Total BWF World Championships, the Commonwealth Games and the Asian Games. In 2019, she went on to win India's maiden Total BWF World Championships gold. Over the years, she's emerged as a consistent performer on the biggest stages. And with that comes expectation. At the Tokyo Olympics, she will be the center of attention once again. Expectations, yes, there are a lot more. Before, uh, you know, Olympics, it was like, okay, I'm just a normal, ordinary player. Let's see what it, what happens. But now it's like, okay, we won that medal from Sindhu. <laughs> the expectations are really high. Uh, I just, uh, it's just that, you know, I just don't want to focus on that. Uh, if you just focus on yourself and give your best, you will automatically do your best and, you know, prove yourself. And of course, the whole world, whole. Uh, country will be proud of you so for me it's just that I have to just play for myself if I think about okay what people want then I think that would add extra pressure so I just want to play and just give my best and be focused yeah um, yeah I mean Olympic medal is always an Olympic medal uh, if it happens last year if it happens this year yeah last year I know I understand there have been you know some circumstances where it couldn't happen and everything has come to a standstill but I think yeah Olympics is Olympics so it is definitely a special moment for everyone and anyone yeah 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 of course I'm looking forward for it <laughs> in what has and continues to be testing times for so many in India Prasala V. Sindhu has this message for her compatriots. I'm sure that it will take some time, but stay positive and keep believing in yourself. And uh, I'm sure that everything will be, you know, settled down and be fine one day. Until then, I think I want everybody to stay safe and be safe and, you know, uh, wear, your, wear your masks and uh, maintain that social distance and uh, keep sanitizing yourself. Uh, apart from that, people who are, you know, uh, losing their jobs because of these, uh, all these times, I think I would just say that uh, I'm sure just keep believing in yourself and I hope you will be there and you will do better. It's time for a quick breather here on Babington Unlimited. But stay with us as we delve into the recent exploits of Prasala v Sindhu. She was a lot more um, focused. Uh, she was fighting a lot, lot harder. Welcome back. After a disappointing outing at the Asian leg, Prasala V. Sindhu was in much better form in Europe. The world number seven was runner-up at the Yonex Swiss Open before bowing out in the semi-finals of the Yonex All England Open. Let's take a closer look at how the Indian ace approached her matches 
at the Utilita Arena. This was uh, pretty, much, pretty much a good uh, tournament for me. Uh, well, not the result that I've expected, but I think a lot more to learn from that. Well done. Yeah, her long stride and the sort of reach that she has gives her really good court coverage. From the starting, I was, uh, you know, I didn't take it easy, even though the score was equal at some point of time. I think the first game I took a huge lead and finished it off. So much raw power, serving her really well right there. Second game was uh, pretty much, you know, until 11 all and 12 all and 17 all it was at some point of time. But I think uh, I still uh, kept going. I know sometimes it's the first uh, match, so, you know, uh, sometimes you don't connect the shuttle or sometimes the, you know, the shuttle, the drift is a bit here and there. But I think you have to control and that, that particular first day match is very important. And I understand that, you know, sometimes it might not be your way, but you always have to keep trying and that's what I did. In the first game, I was uh, actually making a lot of errors where I was hitting uh, outs because from that side, you know, the wind was a lot more. I mean, I tried to control, but then uh, still, you know, I couldn't control. But I think second game was in my favor where I could, uh, you know, uh, play rallies and they were really long rallies. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Got to be absolutely sure to leave it. It's really turning out to be some match this one. Yeah, the work rate of these two is phenomenal. It is. <laughs> it is. I think third game um, was very crucial because I started from the disadvantage side where I lost the first game. But I think I've, uh, I think I would really appreciate myself because, uh, and my coach was also really uh, very supportive and he was making sure that okay, I control the shuttle really well. It was her day, I must say, because whatever she was hitting, it was just on the lines, and even though. I was uh, taking the line calls, or if even she was taking the line calls, it was just like on the line. I mean, I just couldn't do anything about it. Really nice, spreading the uh, play so well. Overall, uh, I should have controlled my unposed errors. Um, maybe it would have been different then, but I think, yeah. I mean, nothing much to say because I know what my mistakes were, because, you know, it was more of like, um, yeah, I was just hitting out or into the net, so yeah. Everybody aims to, you know, be in the final, but uh, I think it's over for now. So I think I have to take, uh, um, I have to learn from my mistakes and uh, take the positives. Time to prepare and come back stronger. Since taking the world crown in 2019, Prasala V. Sindhu struggled to make a winning impact on the HSBC BWF World Tour. With the COVID-19 pandemic affecting the tournament calendar last year, the Indian start needed a good start to 2021. January's Asian leg proved a big ask, but Sindhu bounced back with a morale-boosting display at the Yonex Swiss Open. And although she was stopped short of making a final at the Yonex All England Open, Experts are picking up positive signs that the hard-hitting Indian is steadily returning to form. Pusala Venkata Sindhu, who's been struggling in all honesty uh, since she won her gold medal in Basel. A couple of weeks ago, she reached the final of the Swiss Open in Basel, which was her first final since winning that gold medal. And I think that's a step forward. But I've always said that PV Sindhu is a big tournament player. Come the All England, she found that extra bit of guts and determination against Yamaguchi. That's a good shot. Very good shot. 
That's a beauty. She was a lot more um, focused. Uh, she was fighting a lot, lot harder. Um, and um, much more quality in her attack than what we've seen in the past, what say, 12, 18 months perhaps. So it's good to see that she's, she's working very hard to come back to good, to good form. That's the first time Sindhu got that cross court smash back. Brilliant rally. You could see that she was hurting physically, but still she refused to give up in those rallies and kept fighting and kept fighting. That's what made it such a great match because, of course, Yamaguchi is a great retriever of the shuttle. So you have two players that just will not let the shuttle drop on the floor. Of course it's going to make great badminton. Oh. You said this might be the match of the day, Morton. How I right did. you were. Oh, play, the play is oh, that's gone wide. That's what I say. I think Cindy has got, if it comes to the mental strength, psychological strength, when it gets this close, I think she's a little bit better than Yamaguchi. And she's done it 21-19 in the deciding game, coming from a game down. The reigning world champion, Pusala Venkata Sindhu, in a thrilling encounter. I really enjoyed it. It was, it was my pick of the day, if you can say that, and uh, it turned out to be a fantastic match. It, it went full distance all the way, and uh, both players played uh, very well. And, uh, it was great entertainment. Indonesian players, I would say. Yeah, I think there are a lot of Indonesian players, mostly the doubles players, because the way they play and sometimes they're like, you know, the actions that they do is, is funny. So yeah, couple of Indonesian sure. players, yeah. I think Victor. Yeah. Sure. I feel he's very like calm and just himself and yeah. Uh, Carolina maybe? Yeah, she loves dancing I feel and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love to cook, but I don't know much about cooking and I don't cook in the tours and stuff. But um, again, Indonesians, yeah, they love to cook, so. Okay. Okuhara, yeah. Mongota, yeah. Okuhara said the same thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Loves to play. I love to play pranks. So, <laughs> so what's your favorite prank to play? Like, like to tease. Like, okay, so what is it? And I just message them, and I'm like, oh, is it true? Or okay, what is it? <laughs> so I, I know the answer, but I'm still like, okay, what happened? What actually happened? Just tell me again. <laughs> <laughs> Ashwin. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I would get that to myself. <laughs> I had to, right? Come on. Miss Defense, I would say Victor. Momota. I would, I, it's, it's gonna be like, okay, I'm, I'm just giving it to myself, but I would say me and uh, Saizu. Antonson? <laughs> With his blogs, yeah? 
best mind I would also give it to Rachinov. Yeah, I really love fashion, so I would give it to myself since a lot of people told me. <laughs> Correct, a lot of people have said you oh, are. Oh, that's the so best nice dress. of them. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for you this week. But join us next week as Chinese Taipei's deadly combination and good buddies Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin go head to head in our special online showdown. Plus, Indonesian ace Anthony Sinisuka Ginting sharing his delight when badminton returned to Bangkok. In the meantime, remember to log on to bwfbadminton.com for the latest news and features on the sport. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye.